This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel today. And this one, just an update in case you missed it last night. The Oilers, they've got a new kid in the farm system or in the prospect pool or whatever you want to call it that looks like he's going to be quite the little power play specialist based on what we saw last night. A guy who can find the quiet areas of the ice, the guy who can take that sneaky Nugent Hopkins wrist shot and put it in the back of the net. Yeah, Carter Savoy, quite the little debut here all of a sudden, upstaging to a degree Dylan Holloway's new season start with the Wisconsin Badgers before going on north to play with Team Canada, who have been on the sidelines for a while now. No, it is Carter Savoy, who now has three goals in two games played with his Denver Hockey Club and absolutely just going out and getting the job done. And I mean, that first goal, if you watch that first goal by Carter Savoy, that is exactly what the Oilers want to see on their top power play unit. And I don't care whether that be now or five years from now or six years from now, seven years from now, a guy that can just sneak down from the point and look at this, bang. Puck comes loose on his side of the ice. Defenders are in the middle. Gape and cage, back of the net. That's what you want to see from Carter Savoy. And I mean, that's that's beautiful. Anytime you see a guy with 90% of the net open bury a puck on a power play, you know he's got good positioning and you know he's got the talent to be a good player. So that was a very nice goal to see from Carter Savoy. Obviously, yeah, sure, the, the Denver team, they were able to play the puck very well. They had a man in front of the net. There were three guys in front of the net. That caused the collapse by the University of North Dakota team, but still, right? Carter Savoy, the man who's in the right position to capitalize, and he's there because he was going to do it, and then all of a sudden taking the rush and scoring on the second one. A power play goal kind of comes into the zone late, rushes right into that high slot, and rips it short side on the North Dakota goaltender to get his second goal of the game. All in this, Denver loses the game, and we don't have any credits to how Carter Savoy played defensively. But two power play goals, you like to see that because obviously, right, is depending on what happens here within, say, the next three years for the Oilers, we need that second power play unit or even the first power play unit to be evolved a little bit here. Yes, Yamamoto would likely be the one on the top power play unit once we move on from Chase on Anil. But on that second power play unit, I'm sorry. At some point, it is absolutely unsustainable to keep expecting McDavid, Drysaddle, Nuge, and company to be out there on the power play for a minute 45 every time and then just give our fourth line 15 seconds of power play time and say, hey, go grease a goal because it just didn't work last year many times. I think it worked a total of like two or three times. Then we got a power play goal out of a group with out McDavid or Drysaddle on the power play. So it would be nice to see if a group could be formed here over the next couple of years with our prospects. Obviously, Dylan Holloway, obviously, right, is as we evolve the defense, Bouchard, Broberg, who actually, let's talk about Broberg for a second here. He has now tied through 23 games his scoring uh, record in the SHL from last season in which he had 8 points in 45 or some odd games. He now has 8 points in 23 games. Still of concern, as noted a couple times on Twitter this morning, is the fact that his defensive game, even strength game, is kind of falling apart at the seams. But do remember, with Philip Broberg, he is a, what, 19, 20-year-old kid? playing top-line minutes in professional hockey, it's going to happen. I mean, we we love Philip Broberg because of how he skates. We love because of how flashy he is. Nobody's out here claiming Philip Broberg is the next Chris Pronger, essentially, where he's got that incredible game at both sides of the ice. But at the same rate, right, Philip Broberg, he's got to develop that, and that's why he's in the situation he's in. Is it's not a situation where they need him there, or a situation where they're trying to overexpose him to too much. It's by design with Shaleftia is the fact that Philip Broberg needs that big ice time, that 
big opportunity to either succeed, fail, or do everything in between to get the game growing. You, you can't grow playing sheltered minutes and power play minutes. That's not how a defender is going to grow for the NHL level when it comes to a guy like Philip Broberg, heck, even Evan Bouchard. I know everybody still made fun of him in his defensive game with Sorge, but right is it, it, you got to you got to make mistakes to learn and thankfully they still have that opportunity to do it unlike a guy like Darnell Nurse who is still yes learning on the job and that's fine honestly you're, if you're not learning every day you're not growing as a human being and I, I understand that and that's fine but then you see a guy who like Darnell Nurse who was forced into a role at the NHL level so early on in his career and he's still just been piecing it together trying to figure it out never truly having a veteran right hand shot defenseman to show him what's up to stead of steady him when he wants to go and when he wants to hang back kind of deal but right you don't want to have a Bouchard or a Broberg come into the NHL in that kind of situation where it's maybe a solid 40, 45 games too soon for him, half a year if you want to use actual technical terms, and then uh, kind of get thrown to the wolves and all these years later still learning on the job because that's number one thing we can't have when it comes to developing Bouchard and Broberg is have them learning on the job at the NHL. No matter when you get thrown into the NHL game, you're going to be learning on the job, but if you're learning how to play defense as a whole, as a kind of overarching thing not learning to play defense at the NHL level but learning to play defense as a whole and doing it at the NHL level you're going to struggle and that's why I think honestly right anybody that's come through the Oilers system up until say a Bear or Jones recently has really struggled in my mind to gain and reach full potential because they were forced into a role too soon too fast and away we go kind of deal so that's it, right? Is Broberg learning on the job. Carter Savoy looking good on the power play so far. And of course, now we look forward to what else is to come this weekend when it comes to Oilers prospects because you know Bouchard's going to be in action. You know everybody's going to be in action as we go along here this morning. So we'll have lots of updates throughout the weekend. It's only Saturday. Thankfully, I took Friday off, and I guess I'm all screwed up now, but... Right is we're going to see a lot of guys get into the uh, into the action this weekend, and we'll see what they can do. But right now, all the news, all the news is about Mr. Carter Savoy. Yes, Broberg, I talked about him a little bit, but it's all about Carter Savoy this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tyson. This is Stalin TV. Thanks so much for tuning in. I will catch you in the next one.